We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Madi. And on today's episode, I know y'all have missed me, but I got someone in store for you that you're going to be super excited to hear from. Okay. The amazing, the fantastic Jay Barnett in the building. The crowd goes wild. Wow. <sighs> Jay is an author, speaker, mental health therapist, life coach, and Jay Barnett is on a mission to empower, inspire, and ignite fire into the minds of men and women across the globe, helping them become the best version of themselves. So um, today's topic is how to master relationship rejection. Uh, So we're going to get into the thick of it. I'm so happy to have you. I know your schedule has been crazy, but um, I'm really good at harassing. And so... (laughs) Yes. I've been, I've been on you like white on rice. Like, when are you going to come on my show? When are you going to come on my show? Yeah. We, did, uh, we did a show together. What, what did we do together? I think um, it was a lot. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, but what network was it? I think it was um, Black, it, it, not BET. It was. It was something. Uh, we've done so many guest appearances. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, I think BBC. No, it wasn't BBC. That's British network. Um, <laughs> no, you oh, know what? It was. Black it News was Network. BBC. Was it? Yeah, BNC. Yeah, BNC. BNC. Okay, it was a black news. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was like, I know yeah. we did something together. That's when I first discovered you. And then I was like, let me follow this brother because he is spitting like knowledge, respectable game, um, and wanted to hear your expertise on today's topic because it's something that a lot of people struggle with. Okay, we've all dealt with rejection. Even um, us of the experts have experienced that. But I wanted to bring you in on this conversation to help people and, you know, them to make better decisions, but also conquer some of these fears around rejection. But I got to warm you up. But in order to uh, warm you up, I always start with the guest spotlight, um, which is you having to answer a very spicy question, which is when did you first fall in love with yourself? When did I first fall in love with myself? When was that moment you were like, ooh, I love myself? You know what? You know what, spicy? I'm going to be honest, believe it or not, it was when I made 39. Mm, Dang, that's later in life. Yes. Oh, that was about a year ago. Oh, (laughs) he thought it was like last month. (laughs) Because I'm getting ready to make 40 in April. And here's why. I'll say this. is it's And when when I I think about really falling in love with yourself, Mm -hmm. I think for the first time, I accepted all parts of me. All parts. Mm -hmm. The good, the bad, and the ugly. I think we have a lot of people that love themselves because they cherry pick, right? Mm. I want to take this. I want to take that. It's easy to love yourself because you're talented and you're gifted. Yep. And, and you have these magnificent parts that you love and really hold on to. But I think for, for, at, for me at 39 was the first time that, I don't know, I got to this place. I, I come out of a bad relationship, a bad breakup a couple of years ago. I did my healing. And when I made 39, it was like this light just turned on mm. and I said, man, I love you, Jay. And when I said that I felt the acceptance mm. of the failed relationship, the breakups, the, the broken engagement, all of that, because I had never accepted that. And that was one of the reasons why I didn't fully love myself like I should have, because I was like, yeah, but you had two broken engagements. Yeah, but this happened. So mm. that's why, I, and this is me being transparent. So yeah, no, we I'm, I'm only want that it. here. We only want the transparency yeah. here. <laughs> and I'm happy about it because 39 was an amazing year for me. Yeah. Uh, amazing year, great discovery. And I felt it. I felt like, man, this is really going to be a great year as I head into, you know, uh, uh, this new decade for 40. And so I'm excited. Okay, so you kind of answered it, but this is my follow up question. And I okay. just like to hear you admit your truth. Did you fall in love with? others before you fell in love with yourself yes i did fall in love with others before i fell in love myself and here's why it was easier to love someone else's stuff to love someone else's faults to love someone else's shortcomings their uh deficits before i can love my own because loving them allowed me to take the pressure off of myself and i didn't have to Mm. focus on me and i can focus on giving to them Mm. so of course we know that to be from a performance uh, perspective and so yeah I, I did many mm. times um and, and I think part of it too was and, and I said this on a podcast previously that I usually chose people that not reminded me of my mother but reflected some parts of her yeah so I was always trying to rescue my mom in these relationships so I would choose people that needed parts of me 
to rescue them. Wow. So that caused me to fall in love with the idea of helping them to overcome and to become better. So I was always falling in love with potential. And then when I had to accept the reality, I was disappointed. Wow, that's so funny. Um, uh, the, the, the power that our parents have over us, right? Um, and we'll speak yeah. a little bit to um, that even when it comes to rejection. But a, a part of my testimony and my appreciation for my own mom is like her pr- pretty much pushing me into the industry that I'm in based on like her relationship. So my testimony too, which I speak on often, is my mother in you know a multitude of relationships as I was a child and me wanting a father so bad and watching her go from relationship to relationship and literally like introducing myself to strangers to try to get a dad and pitching my mom. And then now going into the relationship industry, like she will tell you till this day that I'm out here helping people find love and coaching them through love. And she says that it's in order to still solve my mom's relationship issues through them. And I never thought about it. I was like, no, I'm just an expert. I'm just really good. And, you know, of course, yeah. processing it, I'm like, oh, I really am still doing yeah. that from what I was doing, you know, as a child, <laughs> trying right, to solve right, relationship right. challenges. Right. But it's right. crazy that impact that parents have. And, you know, it's it sticks, it sits with us. But unless we have the self-awareness component and we know like where it's coming from, which clearly mm-hmm. you have mm-hmm. and you help people with as well. Um, you can't work through it. You don't even know how to regulate. You don't even know, you know, what actions to take or what behavioral changes to make in order right. for that self improvement. So I, I just love that you are going to be an open book with us. We're going to yeah, jump- absolutely. <laughs> we're going to. I'm going to ask you some questions. So we're going to we're going to jump right into the topic, which is you know how to conquer, how to master um, rejection. You know, really how to overcome it. Um, we don't like it. We don't want to experience it. But can you speak a little bit? to why we have such a problem with it? Why do people avoid it? What is, what is, why is it so triggering for us? Well, I think one of the, the reasons why it's so triggering for us, because most of us have never been accepted in places that we desire to mm-hmm. be accepted in. And so it's so difficult to really see rejection being a part of life and being a part of our makeup as human beings and also being a, uh, a part of our process, even when it comes to connections. Mm. Because anytime that you're reaching out to connect with somebody, there is a huge possibility that you may be rejected. Yeah. It's no different from applying from a job. There's a huge possibility that they may say you're not the right candidate. You're not the right fit. You know, I talk about this a lot when I talk about my pro football experience in, in, in career and pursuit is that, you know, having the, the Packers tell me, we love you. You've done everything that we asked of you, but we're going to sign this other guy because it's not that you can't play football, but you're just not the right fit for mm-hmm. us. But in that, it felt like I was being rejected. And I have this thing where I truly feel that rejection is a matter of perception. Once you begin to peel back the layers of what is it about this that makes me feel like I'm unwanted in this space. And many times it's hard for us to really look at it in that magnitude because it's always connected to something deeper yep. and that's that that's lying under the in uh, under the underbelly uh, underbelly of something else which is connected to a place where I really wanted to be loved by my dad. I mm-hmm. really wanted to be accepted by my family. I really wanted to be welcomed in. I really wanted to be viewed and be seen in my authentic self. Yep. But when I presented that someone says, "Oh, it's not good enough." Uh yeah, but if you could just tweak this, maybe we would like you. And so it's hard because human nature has a desire and the propensity to be connected. And we all want to belong, Mm. even if it's unhealthy, because here's the thing. I've seen people rather be accepted in toxic and abusive and unhealthy situations rather than to be rejected. Yep. Because if I am accepted, it validates my existence. Correct. Correct. And who they're accepted by, right? So, like, I think we also forget that we feel like through the association with this person, that now means, and you know, this is also a part of um, growth through self expansion. But the, you know, or even mate involvement, we think that like, if I have this beautiful person, I therefore am beautiful. If I have this person right. who is wealthy, I therefore am wealthy. If I have this intelligent person, I now am intelligent. 
And if I am in the social circle, I now am just as important. And so we will allow ourselves to sometimes be in even, you know, these toxic or abusive relationships when it doesn't serve us. It's not healthy. They're taking advantage of us, but it's better than being alone. It's better than not having anyone being back on the market. And I hear that so many times, time and time again, and I'm sure you get this all the time with your clients as well. It's like fear of releasing someone or releasing a relationship because they don't want to have to start from scratch. And they feel like if I let this person go, no one else is going to want me. And that might not even yes. be the other person telling them that sometimes it's their own voice internally telling them exactly. that because they didn't exactly. sometimes even get it from their, from their childhood, you know, their parents or, um, and I think it has to do also too, cause we spoke to emotions, but also, um, how someone, you know, receives love, how, you know, someone, um, processes acceptance and what their attachment style is. So wouldn't mm-hmm. you say that that also can, you know, give some, um, you know, credibility to like how someone's going to react when it comes to rejection. Oh, abso- absolutely. And especially when things are connected to uh, certain parts to a mental, I wouldn't say a mental health, but from a capacity that eventually can turn into a mental health issue uh, causing disorder, I mean, causing depression, anxiety, and different those and things of, uh, of that nature. Uh, when someone has experienced a great deal of a, abandonment, mm-hmm. and for the majority of individuals that we see, especially people who have the attachment style to be overbearing, yeah. right? It's I, I have to be, you know, uh, uh, in your space. I have to know where you are yeah. because I have this fear that you want to leave me just like that. I have this mm-hmm. fear that you want to drop me off or you want to disconnect from me just like mom dropped me off and she never came back. Um, you have these feelings and these experiences of neglect and you have these experiences of you were either the smart child or you were different. So you was treated an outcast as a black sheep. Everyone kind of pushed you to the side and they, you know, surrounded and pr- provided love and protection and care and support around the brother and the support around the sister. And it's so many different experiences that people have that they take into relationship that they're unaware of. Yeah. That forms an attachment style. Yeah. But when and and I, and I and I truly believe this, when you have been loved properly, and when you have been loved in a healthy manner, you understand when you are not wanted in a space, and when you're not accepted of a space, it is not rejection. It's more about I'm being redirected to what's yep. for me. It's redirected. I am being recentered for what I need to be connected to, because the human brain wants to be accepted. Yeah. We all want to be liked. So there's no argument that, you know, well, it's wrong to be liked. It's wrong to want to be accepted. None of those things are wrong. I think what happened with most people is how they view themselves when they are rejected. And that's what I'm constantly reframing for many people is, okay, what does this rejection feel like? Mm-hmm. Okay. When he said that he wanted to go a different direction what did it feel like? I felt like I wasn't good enough. Mm. Okay. Did he say that you weren't good enough, but they are attaching and many times people are attaching what they hear, how they interpret to other things. And until an individual take the time to unpack, why do I interpret rejection as if I'm not good enough, as if I'm not this or I'm not that it's Mm. never about, you know what this individual, this grown adult man or woman, is entitled to make a different decision. And let's be honest, people, no, it doesn't feel good. <laughs> it doesn't. It but man, freaking people, sucks. <laughs> it sucks. But people have the right to change their mind. I never forget, I was dating this girl twice, and I said to her, listen, I like you, we good, we mm-hmm. rocking, we moving. But I said, can I be honest with you? I said, any time that you wake up and say, Jay, um, I, I don't think I want to continue. And she was like, why would you say that? I said, I don't know why it just came to me. Mm-hmm. But I said, I want to give you the freedom to understand that you have that right. And she was like, why are we having this conversation? I said, no, I just, I just want to, because it's a real thing. Yeah. Because I don't, 
own you. You don't own me. Yes, we like each other. We, you know, we quote unquote in love and we have these mutual feelings. But again, if you wake up and change your mind, it's not that you rejected me. You rejected me. It's that you change your mind. Maybe you want something else. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I'm just having this, this conversation with you. And she was just like, wow, no man has ever said anything like that to me. And I said, it's just a real thing. And we weren't on bad terms or anything. Yeah. But I, I just think being able to have conversations like that, it allowed for the both um, for both persons to, you know, exude ma- uh, maturity, a level of maceration to where, man, hey, because I see it happen. You've seen it happen with couples. And I can't believe he said this. I can't believe she's doing this. It's like, man, listen, you can't hold on to these people. And, and me and her, we laughed about it because I said, hey, if you say you don't want me or if I say I want, please don't, don't, don't kill me. Don't hurt me. <laughs> well, like, let's keep it 100. So that's the part that I, I feel like we've become so um, sensitive Obsessed. to and like being unable to handle the truth. So when it comes to yes. someone saying like, hey, this isn't going to work out, right? The truth of the matter is, is I'm sorry, that person doesn't want you. Like, I'm going to just keep it one. I'm I'm raw and I'm an <laughs> asshole with mine. He doesn't fuck with you. He doesn't want you. He sees something else for his future, whether it's he wants to love on himself, whether he wants to love on someone else. He doesn't want you. It's the same for men and women. If she, if she doesn't want you, she doesn't want you. Let's keep it 100, okay? Yeah, yeah. But just because that person doesn't want you doesn't take away from your worth. And I think that we get so wrapped up in the value that we bring to the table, the value that we bring to this earth, being on someone's need for acceptance. Like if this person doesn't accept me, then that means that the value that I bring is less than I'm not the the million dollar prize that I thought I was. I'm only, you know, worth a hundred bucks. No, the truth of the matter is, is he doesn't see your value of a million dollars. So you need to go find someone who does see that value of a million dollars versus dwelling on the fact that he doesn't want you and getting so obsessed with that and then lowering your value, lowering your standards even, and trying to move on into the next relationship, begging and praying for somebody to love you. But now you're valuing yourself so much less because you let that yes. person define your worth. Absolutely. You teach it. So instead of us like sugarcoating and being, you know, like, I, I, cause I just feel like we're at this point where we're like, you know, it's not, we're, we're trying to make it, we're trying to soften the blow for a lot of people. And I think because we're so fearful when it comes to rejection, we're not learning how to conquer it, right? We're not learning how to to move through it. Oh, oh, that's it, Spice. We're not learning to conquer how to move through it, which leads me to this. If you can, and again, I'm 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 being I'm I'm gonna be the opposite of Spice because I I love her (laughs) raw because. It's, Go I, I'm not gonna lie Be because nice. it's what I, I it's, it's, it's what I am with my homeboys. I love that space, man. When I ain't on camera, when I'm like, bro, let's just be one hundred. Here's the thing: stop taking rejection personal. Mm-hmm. Stop taking it personal. Yeah. Stop internalizing rejection as if something is wrong. What if you looked at what was right about you? Yep. To see yourself in a situation where you are accepted. Because again, there's nothing worse than wanting the love from someone who has withdrawn their love from you. It's nothing worse than saying, give it to me. And the person has shown you that, hey, I have taken my love from you. I've taken my feelings. I have withdrawn my thoughts. I've withdrawn my emotions. Yep. And what happened is that when we begin to fight in places to be accepted, you are devaluing your true worth. Yep. Because you're never going to have to fight for a love that is free to give to you from the person that truly feels that way about you. Yep. You don't have to fight for it. And so, you know, and the best way to conquer it is to ask yourself, okay, is this about me or is this about them? Because mm-hmm. if it's about you, you're going to internalize it. And you're going to make it about you what to say, hey, this don't feel good, but that's their decision. Let me work on moving forward. Because the longer you sit here and you have this inner dialogue with yep. yourself about what you could have done, what you should have said, did I do something wrong? Did I say something wrong? No. This individual made a decision. They changed their mind for whatever reason. 
that the best decision that you can make for yourself is how to move forward. And that's how you can begin to conquer re rejection without taking it on as its weight, as if you're not this. Well, it sounds even like you're saying, um, affirm yourself. So like oh, remind yes. yourself, you know, what makes you so lovable? What makes you so incredible? Exactly. And sometimes that does look like a list. Sometimes that does look like reaching out to loved ones and even having them tell you. Sometimes that does look like you having to go through um, all of the things that you are grateful for to experience in your life when someone is saying, like, I'm not fooling with you right now. And no. what oftentimes will happen is rejection happens enough and enough and enough and enough to the point where we tap out. We're like, I don't like the way mm -hmm. that this feels. I don't like that I haven't um, met my person yet. So I'm just going to tap out of the game. I'm not going to enter and I'm not going to play anymore because when I do, I don't succeed. I keep having failure after failure. Oftentimes that's when they come to us and they're like, no. <laughs> what's wrong with me? You know, like, I don't know no. why I'm not in a relationship right now. I got all this going for me. And the truth of the matter is, is if you avoid getting into the game, if you avoid actually like dating or being in relationship, because you're so afraid of the rejection or afraid of the feeling or the hurt that comes with it, the lack of acceptance, you now are lo losing the skill set that you need to season in order to become better in relationship. And right. I kid you not, I literally had to convince myself because I've experienced so much rejection in life just when it comes to everything, when it comes to career, when it comes to lovers, right. um, that I appreciate it. Like I had to learn to appreciate, appreciate it, it so yes. that that way, if you don't want me, great. I love a good breakup. Cause you know what? That means I get to go find the person who does like, if you don't worship my dirty draws, I'm going to go find the person who wants to clean them. Like let's, yeah. let's get through this. Let's move past it so that we can move on to the person who can love us equally or, you know, match our love that we have to offer, yeah, but staying exactly. in it, dwelling in it in the pain or even staying out of the game, not putting ourselves in so that we don't get hurt is only going to keep you limited in your skill set of how to conquer it. Absolutely. And I think two more importantly for the English people out there, I think this is either prefix or suffix. I think this is a prefix if I'm not mistaken. So, but I think <laughs> you have to, again, for the English people, don't come for me. Um, <laughs> so, like, but y'all, y'all, yeah, all these groups just be on some different stuff. But I think you have to reinsert different words behind rejection. Yep. And one of the words that I often tell any individual is you have to recenter yourself after you have dealt with rejection, mm. after you have encountered re rejection. You have to recenter yourself. You cannot move forward until you recenter yourself because you need to know where your baseline is and you need to know where you're standing and what is your position. After you recenter yourself, okay, I'm recenter. I now need to refocus myself. Once I refocus, I now need to realign. Recenter, refocus, times, realign. Okay. Re recenter, refocus, and realign. Many times we are out of alignment and we're trying to get people mm. who are not aligned with us, Facts. who don't share the same focus, and they themselves are not centered. We're trying to convince them, hey, love me, yep. see me, believe in me, you know, support me. And, and, and I see this with so many couples, so many individuals that are trying to force things mm -hmm. because if you're trying to force your somebody to accept you, you got a nightmare waiting to happen. Yeah. Because you have some people who would take you through the ringer just to prove a point to you. I've seen people take these people through a, I mean, a circus. Yeah. And guess what? If you sit in front center and you got the popcorn and as my grandma said, you can put this uh, suit on this pig and put some lipstick on it, baby, it's still a pig. Put a crown on his head, it is still a pig. It is still a monkey. Because <laughs> okay. we do that. We put a you know, you put the dress on the pig, put some lipstick on, still a pig. You put the suit on, I mean, the uh, the suit on the monkey, and you put a crown on him, and inspecting the king, and he's still going to do monkey shit. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, you know what I mean? So, it, it just really take the time. And I think you, you, you said it uh, so clearly. Really remove yourself from it and not carry that weight and says, okay, how can I recenter myself so I can get refocused on yep. what my vision is, what my goals are, and then I can realign myself to the path of somebody who's going to accept me for yep. me. 
and not me constantly making these adjustments and making these alterations because that's where we yeah. are today. I see so many people making alterations about who they are, what they're doing. Okay. They well, what about the alone. self-growth component to it? Because like sometimes people are leaving you because you do do some shitty stuff. So I do think that when you're saying recenter, that that is the time for you to look at maybe what you contributed to the breakup, right? Yeah, look within. Yeah, I do think that that is some time for you to do some self reflection and say, like, hmm, could I have handled our our conflict better? Could I have spoken to her kinder? Could I have yes. um, been more considerate to his family? Whatever reasons you broke up, because I don't want people to also get it twisted and think that we're just saying like, you know, that person's tripping just move on. I want to make it clear. We're not saying that we're saying like, you can't dwell in that pain, but you definitely need to take some accountability or responsibility for the breakup, but not look at it as if um, you led to its demise, but noting what your contribution was in how you showed up for that person before you move on to the next person and potentially replicate some of those bad habits. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's so true because we, we have the tendency, especially in this era to uh, not take responsibility for the role that we played and mm-hmm. how someone else responded or reacted. This is, uh, I'm going to hit you, and when you hit me back, I'm going to tell the world you hit me. Yes. This is the society we in. Well, he did this. Well, what did you do? And right. how did you contribute to <laughs> right. doing that? Right? And the same thing with her. What did you do? I, me personally, you know, I was in that situation, you know, a, a few years ago in a relationship. She was quick to say what, what what I did, what Jay did, but it's like, in my mind, I'm like, well, you said some things that caused mm-hmm. me to react in that way. So you, you can't poke the bear, yep. and when this bear maul you and take your arm off, and you call it, oh, he despaired to know. What did you... <laughs> <'cause>, <laughs> That, listen, because there, there's no bear running around biting people. Like somewhere, somebody poking this bear, somebody instigated, yeah. somebody was bothering this bear. The bear got agitated, and bear did what bears do. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so let's just be real about it. And I think there has to be self reflection. Hear this, people. You have to look back, mm-hmm. and self introspection is you have to look within. You have to look back and you have to look within. And you have to look within from holding a mirror to yourself. Yep. How can I have done this better? Yeah. How can I have responded better? Because I've gone back and again, I've had a very, um, you know, when I was done playing ball, I had a very aggressive nature that I had to work through. I was very mm. aggressive. I was very aggressive. You know, I wasn't going to hit nobody, but it was just like I would punch stuff. Well, you were an athlete. Aren't you used to like tackling and knocking people down? And so and so doing that, man, I had to really grow and I had to really do some work on Jay. You can't get upset and punch walls and you can't because I no longer had. Oh, you had a temper. You know what I'm saying? I no longer had. Well, it wasn't necessarily temper. It was that, you know, I never got to date this girl. It's like she kept poking me. And so when I got mad. I wasn't going to put my hands on her. So I didn't have football anymore. Because you when, had to release when, when somehow. Guys are, ex- exactly. When guys are playing ball, you know, you have not aggressive nature, but you have a reactionary response mm-hmm. because you're trained to react, right? I'm not condoning any aggressive nature. Now, can that reactionary response be aggressive? Absolutely. Mm. Because you're dealing with a sport that's football, which yeah. is very physical. And the physicality of the the, uh, of the sport is we push, we use our hands. Sure. So in that, I had to really grow to understand on how to not be reactionary, but how to be responsive. Mm. So in that development and addressing that part of me, I had to do a lot of looking within. Jay, you're not playing no more. Yeah. So you got to find another way to release your masculine or aggressive nature or energy. Now, in that transition, I was still passionate. So I had to be careful to where my passionate didn't look like I was aggressive. Yeah. Because aggression can look like passion. Yep. Yep. And so in that, I had to differentiate differentiate what does that look like from the other person's view. Yep. 
And so, like, how does that feel? Exactly. So I can't just say, well, she said this or she said that. I got to look at, okay, Jay, can you be a little more calmer, right? Can you be a little more, you know, just kind of, you know, I I call it shoo-shooing. You know, can you be a little more loving or whatever? Softer. And a little more softer, a little more gentle, a little more, you know, just kind of compassionate. And these are things, and this is why... Healing for men is so critical when it comes to relationships, whether you're an athlete or non athlete. Mm -hmm. I just think that innate that there's this aggressive nature in us. And some some guys, this aggressive nature is perpetuated from what they do or from their environment. Some guys is just kind of like they're quiet. All of a sudden, the dude snaps. You're like, oh, what? Because I've been around guys who are quiet. And all of a sudden, man, and I've seen dudes go off and you like, Mm. bro. I didn't know he had that. In <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so what, what I'm saying is that as we begin to mature as men and women, we have to take responsibility for our own development yep. and for our own actions. So now I'm at a place to where I'm, I'm gentle, right? I'm compassionate. You know, my mom was saying to me a few weeks ago, she's like, boy, I remember you just, you know, everything is just, you know, (laughs) and I said, mom, because again, you take a guy, I've been playing football since junior high and I stopped when I was 25, 26, trying to figure out like, hey, calm it down. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it takes looking within. And when uh, this girl I dated, she was like, Jay, you need to get some help. And I remember, and I thanked her for it a few uh, a number of years ago when I started going to therapy and it, it wasn't because I was violent. It, it's because it was just so much bottled up yep. in me. And I think so many people have suppressed so many feelings, men and women, Yeah, because I've seen women who are aggressive. I've mm-hmm. seen women who have these violent nature. Right? Yep. And so we all have it depending on what you've gone through. Well, it's because how you process your feelings. Some people have that. are uh, have created a pattern of instantly reacting, right? Mm-hmm. Unless they have received professional help or have done the um, the work, they don't know how to reflect. They don't know how to respond right. in a way that serves the goal of that moment or that serves the goal of the couple. They only know, okay, this set me off. So based on this emotion, I'm going to let you have it. But yeah. that reaction that you're giving is not going to help you achieve your desired result. What it's going to do Absolutely. is, and I'll use this oftentimes with my clients when it comes to masculine feminine energy, I can't outman a man. So if my husband comes at me and he's in a mood or I set something off or I said something that triggered him, me trying to jump bad with him and sit in my masculine and pump chest with him back, I'm not going to win that. The only way that I'm going to win and get him down from his like high testosterone, high horse is sitting in my soft feminine energy so that, that oh. we can create some balance going on because so you, you need to say that again to you need to say, <laughs> that, no, you, you need to say that again for the women that are listening. <laughs> and I like what you said. If I'm getting into if you get into a bumping match with it's, yeah. it's not and it's not about winning, but it's also how do you de-escalate that? And yep. I like what you how said. How do you de-escalate? That's the perfect and way that's, to describe it. That's the feminine power that you have. I never forget this. That this woman, literally, I'm upset, and she literally grabs my hand. Mm. She said, hey, look at me, Jay. Look at me. Look at me. She refocused you. Refocused me. And guess what? That line is soon, that line, all of a sudden, but down to a lamb again. (laughs) (laughs) And I I thanked her for that. And for that, I tell you what, she she got my heart. Because what I realized is that she wasn't telling me don't act like this, right? Mm-hmm. Because this is my nature. She simply engaged to not to try to match me, yep. but to diffuse, hey, it's okay. I understand you're upset. I understand you're mad. But, you know, it's okay. Yep. And that, that I mean, you know. I think that hits um, it on the money, the diffusing of the situation. Man, when we yeah. try to match you guys, we're not... I'm not going to outman you no matter what I do. I can't outman a man. So if I can diffuse the situation using my superpowers, my feminine energy, I can bring you down to a place where you're not in that sitting in that emotion of rage or that emotion of disappointment, whatever the emotion is that you were in, I can Mm -hmm. pull you out of that emotion 
by simply being soft with you and giving you love because it's hard to fight yeah. off love. No matter what yeah, negative emotion, off, no. <laughs> yeah, no matter what negative emotion, it's really yeah. hard to fight off love. <laughs> no, we, we we can't because she put them eyes on me, man. I was gone. Tell I me, was gone. What would you say to someone? And I get this often with clients, which I'm sure you do as well. This whole, well, he didn't love me enough to work on himself, or she didn't love me enough to change. Why do we take it so personal when the person won't do the work that they need to do in order to be where we're at? Because them changing validates our ideal that we had of them. Mm. Mm. Ooh. I got some <laughs> listeners that are going to be mad at that right now. <laughs> because him or her changing validates the idea that we had of them when they get right. We're going to have this type of relationship. Yep. When he gets this and when he becomes that, we're going to be able to do this. We're going to be able to do that. Listen, it's not about someone didn't love you enough to change. Someone was not aware of the love that they needed for themselves to mm. change. Mm. So we have to stop making this about ourselves. Yeah. And allow the other person to, again, look within. And this is why we have to be careful of pursuing relationships with quote unquote potential. And begin to look at the reality of who we are dating or yeah. who we are interested in sure. and, 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 and who we are uh, checking out and accept who they are today. Because there's a huge possibility that he or she may or may not change. But can you still accept them? Right. Do you go into these situations and expecting somebody. I see this a lot with women in the church. Girl, if I could just get him saved, if I could just get him full of the Holy Ghost, <laughs> if I could just get him going to Bible class, girl, I know God is. If God's I could just get him ministry. to stop drinking, if girl, I can get if, him to stop smoking, like I see a lot of that. Man, if I can just get him to understand that there's a work in him that God is going to do through him, <laughs> lady, 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 ma'am, ma'am, hear me. You are setting yourself up for failure. This is a disaster, not waiting to happen. This is a disaster in happening at this <laughs> current moment. Currently happening. <laughs> like, it's a disaster in happening because here's the thing. If somebody has to change in order for me to feel love, then is that love real? Because love is really based on the premise that I accept you as you is. Yeah. If we're going to go there. Yeah. Right. If we're going to go there. Yeah. So, you know, we, we, we and, and, and I think a lot of this is that it's easier to look at someone to change for you, for you to feel love because it exempts you from doing the work that you need to do to give yourself the love that you are re- really looking for. Mm. See, we don't really want to do no work. Spike. Right. A lot, a lot. These folks that- does not want to do no work. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Speak on it. I'm grateful. They want to pay you. They want to pay you. <laughs> you going to find them. They want me to husband. do it all for them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I'm supposed to unwrap or unpack 30 to 35 years of all the crap that they've done. And they want yeah. me to help them find someone within one year. Like, oh, fix me within one year. Find me someone within one year to love me and accept me as I am. But like, what have we been doing on our own? What, how have we been operating with self-improvement? Where, where have we been growing? Exactly. It's a process. It's a whole process. Um, what do you think? And I, I want to just kind of get your opinion on this. Who do you think handles rejection better? Who is more masterful with it, men or women? And what neither, are the differences? Neither handle rejection at all. Not neither handle. I mm. think men. I think men can't handle rejection. Women don't understand rejection. Mm. Speak on that. That's my take. On Expand it. on that a little bit. I think when it comes to men. We both have egos, right? And from a ego perspective, a man can't handle the rejection because there's this part of him that's entitled that if I lean in, if I pursue, you should give me what I want, mm-hmm. right? I'm asking you for your number. Hey, ma'am, how you doing? You, you know what I'm saying? I would love to get your number. I'm good. I don't really want it. Go ahead, then be our TCH. I ain't really want you no way, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So there's his ego is crushed. Mm-hmm. 
The woman don't understand it because there's a part of her that's entitled that I get to choose. So if I'm choosing, that's saying that I have now solidified that you qualify for me mm -hmm. to pick you. And if I pick you and you don't pick me back, mm -hmm. something's wrong with you mm -hmm. and nothing is wrong with me. Mm. So why are you rejecting me? And I don't understand because I'm this, I'm that, and yes. you should say yes. And so that's my, you know, kind of uh, extended context on that because I feel that we're both entitled in our own ways. Mm. So that's why I don't think neither of us handle it well. And until you matured in a space where you can understand that, again, rejection is nothing personal. Uh, me and my boys, we said this, you know, I, I, I tell this story often. There was this, this lady that I used to like, this was years ago, and I slid in her DMs, right? And um, a beautiful lady lived in Boston, and, you know, I shot my shot. I don't think that terminology was, was, was you know, was something that was... Uh, you know, uh, in, you know, moving or conversation or communication back then. So she said, you know, Jay, I'm flattered, this and that. And she said to me, she says, um, you know, Jay, I, 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 you know, I'm interested, but then again, I don't know if I am because, you know, you live in Texas and I live mm -hmm. in Boston and I don't know if I can do the distance thing. And she was like, you know, I'm getting ready to start this business and I really would like someone who, lives closer in a close vicinity. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? I said, I respect that. Now for me, I didn't take it as rejection mm -hmm. because I understood her position. Yeah. But see, when we don't look to have an understanding of someone's position, mm -hmm. again, I now internalize this as if, Hey, why you didn't, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 you know, you know, fix it to where it would make me feel better about myself. Mm -hmm. Nothing she said, said that I was a bad guy, that right. she wasn't attracted to me. She was. She just said, I prefer somebody that's close. Now, I'm going to show you the other side of that. Yeah. Flipping. Lady lives in, lady lives in somewhere on the East Coast. Shoots a shot at me. So I says to her, right, hey, you know, same thing. I'm flattered <laughs> or whatnot. And I said, and I said to her, I said, I don't, I don't really do the distance thing. Lady says to me, this is what's wrong with you, man. You don't know a good man, a good woman when you see I knew one. He was gonna this go is there. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, wait, huh? And I was just like, but I was honest and forthcoming. Like, you know, I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm just not a, a distance dude, man. Like, you know, and several years later, I now understood what the woman told me several years ago. Yeah, I'm building something. I'm kind of settled in my career and, you know, things are popping. So I kind of like, you know, I want to be able to go out on Friday night. Like, I don't want to hop on a plane and just, you know, I didn't go into details, but I felt like she didn't understand that because she wanted what she wanted. Yep. No. And you, I knew it was going to be that. I knew when you flipped <laughs> it, it was going to be that. Because <laughs> honestly, I was like thinking to myself, okay, what's another way that even when old girl had told you like she didn't want you because essentially she was like, I don't want to do long distance. Um, what's another way that you could have interpreted that? And you could have told yourself like, oh, she doesn't like me enough to try to make long distance work. That's usually what someone will say to themselves. Exactly. I got it. Yeah. So, so help me out, Spice. <laughs> why, did, why did that lady interpret it as that? Because she felt like what you said earlier, she was stepping out of her comfort zone and shooting her shot, right? She was putting her putting her pride or her ego to the side and taking a chance. And when we take a chance or when we take risk and there's not a return on what we just risked, there's not a reward, we get extremely deeply hurt because we put ourselves out there and we essentially are embarrassed. It's not really even that she wanted you so bad. She don't know you. She doesn't know like what she's really missing out on. So there was not a real attachment. The attachment was to the answer and not to the person. So that all she heard was no. So she had to, in order to make herself feel better, tell herself what's wrong with you or what's wrong with men in society versus saying, oh, okay, we're not equally yoked or he's not attracted to me perfectly fine. I'm going to go find someone who is attracted to me 
Because honestly, that's the truth. At the end of the day, either this person is attracted to you or is stimulated by you or feels something from you. And if that person doesn't, then they're going to be on their way. And we spend too much time wondering what's wrong with us or what it is, you know, what, what is it about us or what you have going on? She probably had to tell yourself, you probably got a girl on the side. We start lying to ourselves and making up these stories and wasting all this time with the story that we need to make ourselves feel better than actually going to someone who wants us. Like that's really the solution. And I tell my clients all the time, there's 20 doors, right? That we got to walk through in order to potentially meet our purpose mate, in order to, to, to be matched with them. And we get so stuck behind door number one, two, or three, when we get told no, or that person doesn't want us, or that person doesn't believe in commitment, or that person's not equally yoked with us, we will get, we will stay behind door number three with the wrong person. When our person is behind door number 20, we won't walk through those other doors because we're like, well, those other doors are going to require more work. Those other doors are going to mean that I have to put myself out there again. Those other walking through those doors means that I have to go on more dates and I'm tired of doing my makeup. Like we'll find all these reasons not to have to continue going Mm -hmm. down the doors. But the truth of the matter is, is like, if I could guarantee each person that your person or your purpose mate is behind door number 20, if we could guarantee it, people would make more of an effort. People would continue on with the rotation of like moving past it and not letting their ego so much get in the way because they know that person is there. But part of rejection comes also fear, fear of the unknown. That's where the anxiety comes from. And what if my person isn't behind door number 20? What if I'm leaving it up to fate? What if nobody wants me? Let me just accept what's behind door number one, or let me accept what's behind door number two, knowing that it's not good for us. But we have to tell ourselves these stories about why we're not wanted or why we're not compatible so that we can get the courage to move on. But that's not the healthy way to do it. The healthy way to do it is looking at the positive way that we can, what can, what can I learn from this situation? Okay. This person doesn't want me. Well, maybe he wasn't attracted to me. Maybe, um, he did. He, it was the distance. Maybe he's just getting out of a relationship and he is healing. That's perfectly. Okay. Perfectly. Okay. Let me move on. Cause I have 17 other doors that I need to get through and spending time worried about why Jay doesn't want me. is going to take way too much time. Yeah. I'm potentially missing out on my next person because of that. Right, we right. gotta lie to ourselves sometimes to to, to soften the blow. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's that, that's it. But we can't like, continue. We can't always be lying to ourselves. <laughs> like yeah. we we will stay lying to ourselves, painting this narrative because just like you said earlier, our ego, our ego, yeah. our pride, you know, and you not wanting me therefore says that I'm unwantable or I'm not a wanted person, and we think that all men now see us like that versus just one. It was just you. You were the only person that, you know, rejected her that day, but she's telling, telling her story of it's all men. This is a problem with dating in 2021, 2022 now. Oh my goodness. This year is flying. What's some of the stuff that you wanted to get off of your chest? You said that there was some relationship. um, Oh, no, no. Am I covering it? Yeah. Yeah. You covered it. I think, (laughs) I I, I think one of the things is that, you know, we, we, we've seen so many changes in um, relationships. Um, you know, throughout the pandemic, mm-hmm. I mean, divorce rate is up. Yeah. And I think one of the things is, you know, just really being able to come to the table and really have honest conversations, whether whether it's with your mate or just with yourself. And I think mm-hmm. you just alluded to that, is we have to stop lying to ourselves. That's, yeah. that's, the, that's the reality of it. It's like we have to stop lying to ourselves and really deal with what's really going on within and not making it about, well, he did this and she did that and really just saying, okay, what am I doing? Yeah. Could there be some things that I'm contributing to, you know, when it comes to me as an individual in the scope of relationships? Yeah. Because if I move through life, not having looked within, I have now just cheated myself mm-hmm. of developing as a human being because the objective is to grow and to grow. You're going to have to deal with growing pains and yeah. dealing with the pains that, no, this is not what I expected. Mm-hmm. And this is what I need to learn from it. This is what I wanted, but it's not what it was given. And it's okay. Let me uh, abstract, I mean, extract what I can from it and let me take it and grow in it. And I think that's the difficult thing is no one wants to grow in it because to grow in it means that you want to be stretched in areas that you don't want to be stretched in because it's like, uh, you know, touch this, but don't touch that. And 
to grow as a yep. person, especially in relationship. And I tell clients all the time, you can't grow in this world without a relationship. Facts. Oh my gosh. You cannot grow in this world without a relationship. And when I say that, I'm not talking about a loving relationship. I'm talking about a relationship with your friends, a relationship with your peers, a relationship with uh, uh, colleagues, co-workers, family members. You grow in relationships. Yep. You grow in seeing differences of opinions, perspectives, objectives, all those different things. And so, but no, you you covered everything. So, I'm going to yeah, use that as I'm a good. spicy, I'm going to use that as a spicy tip though. You're going to see it um, in a post within the next few days. Um, yep. Everybody wants the growth, but none of the growing pains. Yep. I'm gonna I'll, I'll make sure I quote you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was a good spicy tip. I'm about to post yeah. that on my IG. Uh, yeah. But it's 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 so true. And you know, I want what I want though for people to take away from this though is like what they can do in order to process um, and conquer rejection better when it does come up for them. What are some of the things that they can do immediately so that it doesn't turn into a snowball effect of um, you know self ridicule or self deprecation what can they do in those moments you know he he you swiped you guys went out on a date he doesn't want to go on a second date with you okay or in those moments of we've been together for a year and now she's telling me she doesn't want to you know live with me anymore in those moments when you first get that blow of no that's essentially what it is is no versus yes when you first get when you get that at no what are some things that people can instantly do in those moments so that they can start to calm that emotion of fear or you know um you know hurt or anger pause mm. pause i think we're, we're 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 so busy and we're so um in a hurry mm -hmm. to blame uh, we're so in a hurry to not accept accountability and responsibility yeah. that we quickly find something to latch on to, yep. right? Because again, if I can find something to latch on to, it validates that they're that way, it's their issue, it's something wrong with them, and yep. I'm okay, it's just really pause. Pause and give yourself an opportunity to take it in. And just because you're taking something in doesn't mean that you're taking it on. Mm. I can take it in, and not take it on and taking it in is just me really just saying, okay, let me look at this from a different perspective. Let me step outside of myself and let me see, is this something that I did to cause this? Mm -hmm. Or is this a decision that this person is choosing to make? Because you can do all the right things, but if that person has a difference of opinion and that person has a change of heart, they have a differences in how they feel. They're entitled to that. But if you can take a pause and says, hey, I don't like how this feels. It doesn't feel good. I'm hurt. I'm disappointed. Yeah. I'm a bit embarrassed. However, their change of heart has nothing to do with who I am. Mm -hmm. And I think you can start there. I think that's really good. I'm going to add to, I love the pausing portion um, another spicy tip that I'm going to give for you guys. Um, cause I do think that we are quick to like rush and react. So I love the pausing. I think another thing that we can do is, um, build our rejection chops up. So an exercise that I'll give my clients is, um, asking for more. So someone who doesn't ask for more, isn't used to being told no. If I ask for a hundred things, chances are um, 75% might get no, but I'll have mm -hmm. experienced some yeses because I've asked for more. And what I mean by this is um, if you're a person who has a hard time with hearing the word no, it's small things. Go to a restaurant, ask if you can take home the salt and pepper shakers. The waitress or waiter is mm -hmm. going to tell you, no, sorry, you can't. But right. now you've activated this like hearing no portion <laughs> in your life. Mm -hmm. um, ask for more numbers. So that that way well, you'll get two out of 10. Ask for um, a discount on your bill. So that way you can see whether, you know, you'll hear no or yes. But I really think that we need to not desensitize ourselves from the pain that comes with no, but get used to hearing the word so that that way yes. we can figure out how to problem solve for that and learn how to get more yeses versus just yeah, not uh, activating absolutely. and hearing. We we're trying to avoid the word no altogether. And I don't yeah. like the word. I actually hate the word no. I prefer yeah. yes, but 
but I'm going to ask for more of what I want <laughs> so that I can get yeah. more yeses. And that's the thing. Nobody the likes no. no, man. Nobody <laughs> likes no. Nobody likes no. And that's, you know what I mean? That, that's normal, right? You know, nobody <laughs> wants to be told no. Nobody wants to hear, um, no, you've been denied. No right. one likes to hear, hey, we're moving on and we're choosing another candidate. Yep. No one likes to hear, you know, hey, great job, but, you know, I just think that, you know, um, you, you're missing some things that we would, you know, kind of want you to have. And so it, it, it's, 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 it's a, a natural thing. Yep. Right? You know, even kids don't like to be told no. Right. Can I go outside? <laughs> Can I go over to Johnny's house? No, you can't. Well, why? So we, we always want to know why, and which is a natural thing. But I love what you're saying, building up your 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 rejection, you know. Um, immunity um, almost. Immunity. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Building up your rejection immunity to get into the, the mindset that you will hear no. And when you hear no, how you process it will yep. determine how you internalize it. Yep. And and not to you know, negate our feelings, that's going to be some internalization to where you feel what you feel. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, it, it just doesn't. And I go back to the thing, like, I, I really, I, I really was digging this lady, man. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was digging this Let lady. it out. Let it out. And, 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 and for me, I was just like, you know, I mean, you know, I put myself out there and my homeboys, of course, they went in on me. They was like, who told you no? You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I'm like, wait a minute, bro. Hold on. Like, don't, don't. I want to meet you know her. I want to shake this lady's hand. <laughs> like, you know what, what you so, <laughs> Yeah, so, and, and, you know, and we laughed about it. And I still, you know, time to time, the lady will say, hey, check in. How you doing? This is that. She's, she's still single. So, I don't, you know, I don't know. But, no, uh, you did Exactly. So, I'm like, all right. I guess you didn't find nobody close to you. <laughs> that so. makes you feel better, yeah. right? No, that's so wrong. <laughs> nah, that is so wrong. Nah, nah. You're wrong I'm for that teasing. one. I'm, I'm gonna teasing. I'm gonna wrap up because I know I gotta let you go, but I have a closing question. I always do the naked truth. Yeah. So you have to give your honest truth to this question. If you could have any superpower in the world, what would that superpower be? If I can have any superpower in this world, my superpower would probably be to just fly. Mm, I love that. Yeah, I would. I would want to be able to fly. I've always been fascinated with flying, and <laughs> I, I mean, just I don't. You know, I used to have dreams as a kid that I was flying, mm -hmm. transporting these different places. I forgot what um, someone told me that it meant, but yeah, that that would be my superpower. I love that. I love that. Okay. Well, look, this is, that's what Delta and American Airlines is for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can't get yeah, you the real one, yeah. but look, you can travel, you can travel. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Jay, you're going to let everybody know where they can find you, what they can buy, what services you offer. Um, I know you have a book, like give us, give us yes. everything when we want to consume more information. So yes, all of my books, Jess Hill, bro, hello, King letters to a young queen, finding our lost Kings and Queens. All of my books are on Amazon. Barnes and Nobles, Kindle. Uh, Jesse O'Bro is a book that I just recently released back in August. And then also I'm releasing, uh, and Jesse O'Bro, I'm sorry, is a journal for men. So I am encouraging men to express their thoughts and emotions mm -hmm. and feelings. I truly feel that the man who finds his voice finds himself, finds his life. And I am currently in the process of writing Jess Hill Sis, which is a journal for ladies. Eventually, my goal is to bring men and women together to share their healing experiences so mm -hmm. we can stop having these one-sided conversations and, mm -hmm. and placing men against women because we truly do need each other in order to understand the makeup of one another. And you can follow me, Instagram, King J Barnett, Twitter, King J Barnett, and Facebook, King J Barnett. And I am only taking a few selective clients. If you are in uh, the need or look for a therapist or virtual counseling, I do offer that at kjbcoaching.com. Again, that website is kjbcoaching.com. Yep. Look, I'm, you, you probably get some hit after this. Uh, so <laughs> y'all going to be on a waiting list, okay? Just like I was yeah. here. I can't see y'all going to be on a waiting list. <laughs> uh, don't do like that. <laughs> I'm joking with you. I love that you were able to come on. You guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my Instagram at Spicy Mari. Go to thespicylife.com. Um, also, click and subscribe um, to the Spicy Life podcast. Um, and definitely make sure that you guys sign up 
for my e-course that is the spicy S-P-I-C-Y e-course that is, look, helping you guys when it comes to healing, when it comes to recovery, when it comes to finding love, I'm here for you. Um, so once again, you guys have been spiced. The spice.